So we're now on the standardised test that we do, sending uh, Mr C out towards Sleaford, seven miles away. Tango 21, receiving you loud and clear. Um, so we're on the Academy CB501, which uses the Great GT858 chassis. So it's similar to the um, Fidelity 1000, but slightly inferior in not having an extension speaker socket. In line with the MPT1320 CB2781 requirement, it does have high-low power. And of course we've got it on high. These are a 3.5 watt set, they're not sold as a 4 watt set. Just be aware of that. And you're lucky to get 3 watts out of these usually. We got 3.1 uh, on the servicing, which is absolutely incredible. So, uh, if you live in a town, these aren't really a suitable set because they do suffer from bleed over as it's known. Yeah, Tango 21, Mr. Chippy, that's fine. The audio output on these is only one and a half watts as well. So if you try to use it in a noisy vehicle, don't. And without the extension speaker socket, there's not a lot you can do. They use a totally different technique of FM received than most CB radios of the era. Uh, now at uh, Ancaster Crossroads. Tango 21, loud and clear. Don't use a clever chip, but they just use a diode, a double diode uh, detector. So it's kind of very quiet in comparison to a normal FM signal. If I turn the squelch down, it's more like AM. And the squelch is in fact AM on them. There's an AM detector, and that's how the squelch works. Having said all that, I say they were made in 1981, it's 2017. And this didn't need much service work to bring it up to the kind of working order it's supposed to be. And you can see by the wear on it, it has been used. It's not like it's got fed up within in a matter of days and being put back in the box. I did fill in the four holes in the lid where it's had a slide mount. And it did get a spray over when we originally uh, sorted this one out for our use. Tango 21 got you at the quarry. So he's now about um, coming on for two miles away. They've got very sensitive receivers, these, which doesn't necessarily help. Tango 21 got you at Willsford Village, over. It's just dropped right down into the dip, the wrong side of a hill now. He's now about uh, two and a half miles away. Then he'll flatten out a bit and come up to a level crossing. The whole reason we do this this way is because that direction is very poor for radio for us. So to do six miles in the wrong direction, the wrong side of a hill, amongst trees and um, and quarry workings, it um, it's a good test. And a lot of the, especially the new sets, have difficulty. Uh, we have difficulty receiving. That's where they seem to be let down. They seem to generate quite a lot of internal noise. Tango 21 uh, receiving you loud and clear. That makes him a good three miles away now, and I say the wrong side of the hill. Tango 21 got you at the Kelby turning. That's often the most difficult one, that and the next one. As he goes for... Just say that again, I've just had to drop the squelch. Oh dear, it must have been windy when we didn't notice. 
Yep, Roger on that. Roger got you at uh, the crossing for Greyleys over. So he's now five miles away. It's a 60 mile an hour road. That's great. Okay, so if you'd like to proceed towards the roundabout, just give me a final call and I'll swap radios. And uh, when you're in that lay by the other side, um, if you just pull over and uh, I'll give you a call. Well, he did still manage to hear me, which, uh, you know, considering this is 3.1 watts, it just goes to show what little it does make, what little difference, should I say, it makes uh, on transmit power. Tango 21, I'm going to disconnect this one now. So there you have it, the Academy CB501 from 1981.